Hey everybody, my name is Axel Villamil and this is 24 Shades of Blue. For all of the people that are listening, I'm actually on site right now at the K9 unit for Toronto Police Services. We're going to be meeting with John Massey, training constable who's going to show us not only all the amazing dogs, but how they go ahead and train them today. Let's go see it. John, where are we now and what room is this? Um, well, we would refer to this as the classroom. Got it. Um, like many rooms in, at, at police dog services, it's a multifunctional room. Yep. Um, we got a guy's kit bags, uh, level exactly. three vests. Um, I was explaining to the fellas earlier about yep. the cans. We just got a new batch of them in. They're much like the boxes. We'll, uh, oh, you hide we'll, stuff in there? We'll hide stuff in it and then move the, the, the cans all around so the dog has to find them. Mm -hmm. um, this, is where we, this is where the fundamentals get learned, nice. where we sit down and we talk about different things that happen. Um, just so we can break break down um, some of the training techniques and some of the things that we uh, are trying to go through to the handler and, and see what the what the dog is seeing. Yeah, absolutely. In terms of the levels of dogs, you said, could, can you go over those types of dogs? There's explosive, there's... Oh, oh, perfect. Yeah, and okay. then explain each one to us. So okay, so we have uh, general patrol dogs, yep. and that is your typical dog that when someone new comes into the unit, that's the dog that they're going to get assigned to especially being a new vet. And their job is going to be to go out onto, onto the road and answer radio calls which support the rest of the service. Yeah. And so it could be someone in Scarborough, it could be someone in, like an officer in, in Etobicoke okay. asking for our, our assistance. And so basically what the general purpose dogs do is they're dogs that we use for human scent and for suspect apprehension. So they're a locating tool and they're also a use of force option for us. Okay. And so... Uh, I would say that there's a big ratio between locating tool. They're more of a locating tool than a, 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 than a force. The use of force tool. Mm -hmm. um, but we, if if they need to do that job, then they they will they will we'll ask them to do that job. Gotcha. So they'll be used for tracking. So tracking a suspect and tracking is when we have a a, a last known location. So say your house gets broken. Yeah. And somebody runs out through the back door. Mm -hmm. Well, the officers arrive on scene. It has to be a short time after the offense has taken place. Yeah. Maybe you walk home to see the guy running out the back door. Yeah. Well, the officers may call us and say, we just had a suspect flee the back door of this house. Can you help us? And so what we want to happen is we want the other officers in the area to set up what we call a perimeter. Yeah. And we want that person to go to her. So we want to make them stay in one spot. And that's with the officers going around in the area. We hope that person goes and hides. Um, and so now we don't want anyone to contaminate that backyard. We want the, the, the dog to be the first one that goes into the backyard. Yeah. So that's the freshest human scent. Often people will ask, you know, well, you have to give a, a sock or a yeah, I was gonna ask article of clothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, it, it does exist. It's called scent recognition, mm -hmm. but we don't, we can't operate that way because the bad guy doesn't always say, you know what, I'm just going to see if the dog can find me and I'll leave my, yeah, leave something. Never, yeah. So, um, so we'll do what the dogs are used for tracking, searching big areas where a suspect might last have been yeah. seen. Um, and our dogs are used for um, locating evidence as well. So anything that you've touched, you'll see later on, you'll leave scent on that, that piece of property or that part. And so our dogs are, will discriminate against other pieces of property that are laying down and they'll only take the, the property that has been freshly handled by someone. It still has that residue of human scent. Um, we also use our dogs for locating missing people because we get a lot of uh, people that are missing from home. Yeah. And uh, that's a big priority for our service is to find people uh, that are in crisis. So we will use our dogs to find uh, missing people. In here, we got uh, typically referred to as the aggression room. Uh, we teach a lot of uh, apprehension work, apprehension for uh, work, for lack of a better term, as we teach the dogs how to bite properly. Um, we also do uh, uh, detector work in it, so any type of work where the dogs might be sniffing out explosives, firearms, drugs, cadaver, anything of that nature. Um, that's what you'll see behind you in the hallway here is these boxes down, down below is what we use for uh, 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 training the detector dogs will put hides out into the boxes and the dogs have to learn how to search the boxes before they can start going out and searching more operational type scenarios and uh, just teaching the dog what odors to uh, to to kind of 
imprint, we call imprinting, just to basically remember what, what sort of odors the dogs are going to get paid for. Uh, and when I mean pay, it could be a ball, it could be uh, uh, food, anything of that nature. So um, we'll start with this. So this is a, a new piece of kit that we just, we just got. Yeah. Uh, we call it the scent wheel. Uh, Basically, do you, have you ever seen the, the, the guys on the street or movies of where they have the, the you know, whatever, a ping pong ball and a, and a ball, and they'll, be, they'll shuffle it around with the yeah, different... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just, it's the shell game. Okay, cool. Okay, so when we're first teaching the dog, we're going to teach them that they're going to get, uh, they're going to get rewarded for finding the odor that we want them to find. So we have different kinds of dogs. We have the uh, explosive dogs, firearm dogs, uh, cadaver dogs, drug dogs. Um, and so we all have to train them on different, different things. Yeah. Um, you don't want your explosive dog sitting on uh, some, I don't know, some crack or something exactly. like that. That's a bad day. Like not <laughs> right. <laughs> and so uh, this is just a scent wheel and it just gets the, the dog uh, indicating, we call it an indication, mm -hmm. uh, on the target odor. Yeah. And obviously there's a sign on this one that says, Target odor. Yeah. So we'll take this little uh, little jobby off. This is a, just a little scent can, and we'll fill it up with the desired hide that we want. It's a spice can. It's a spice jar, <laughs> right? You, you probably don't want to put you probably don't want to put that on your some of this, that stuff on your food, but C4 yeah, a little yeah. sprinkle of C four. So uh, and yeah, the dog will indicate. Search all the cans, find this, show an indication. Uh, an indication for our dogs is a passive one, so we ask the dogs to sit. Um, we don't want an aggressive hide. We don't want the dogs picking up the explosives and running around. Yeah. That'd be a bad day to see that on the news where your dogs, you have to chase your dog around carrying an explosive. So, um, so we have them sit. And so we can easily now, and dogs are quite smart, so they'll, they'll go to the same spot again and again and again and sit there because they know it's there. But if, now if we take the scent wheel and we spin it, yeah. they've got to now search all the cans to find it. I see. And so what we'll do after a while is we'll take, not only have a piece of C4 like you, you alluded to before, but we yeah. might put distracting odors in some of the other oh. ones. So we might put dog food, their treats, maybe a piece of their toy, anything that they might associate with reward and we, we, we basically get them to ignore those odors and only indicate on this one and that's where they get the positive reinforcement from. What's the score look like here? So is it, you know, from a criteria level, I guess how many times was considered a good score, you know, if they're going to be sitting or if they screw up, you know, what is there like a... Yeah, so, so good question. So basically at the beginning, we ha just outside the door, we have a bunch of boxes yeah. and the boxes are basically the same thing. Yeah. So we'll put the hide inside the box and we'll reward the dog on the box, basically one box. Okay. So we'll put the target odor, say it's C4, we'll put that in the box and we'll continuously reward on that target odor. As soon as we think that the dog has kind of figured the game out, yeah. we'll add another box nice. and it'll just be an empty box. And so there'll be the target odor in one box and the empty uh, uh, the, a, a negative odor in the, in the, or just a blank box in the other one. And so if they offer that behavior of their indication, which is a sit on the negative box, they don't get any reward. John, when you have your hand, uh, explain what this is. Well, put it on here. Okay. Okay, there's a handle in there. I feel like a Viking warrior. Yeah. But yeah, it'll protect you. Protect me? I don't think you can hold an axe with it. I don't think so either. <laughs> So uh, this is one of our, uh, our bite sleeves. Um, one of the training apparatus that we use to condition the dogs to, to bite a certain way. Yeah. Um, often you think of a dog bite. Uh, you know, everyone's got that story of being bit by a dog, you know, as they were kids. And uh, it's a horrific experience that people hear about as, you know, they get, they get bit several times. Yeah. And so we call that cor corn cobbing biting on the sleeve. We don't, we don't like that corn, corn cob cobbing. Corn, corn cobbing. cobbing. Picture yourself. Of course, eating I think I think of the Disney cartoon from years and years ago, and I think it was Goofy eating corn. Yes. Where, yeah. yeah, it was like a typewriter. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so corn cobbing. So what we want to, to do is uh, in a criminal, we call it criminal apprehending. Um, it's, a, it's a better way to put it than just saying, you know, we sent our dog off to bite somebody. Yes. Um, so what we want the dog to do is we want to bite on and to not let go, Got it. right? So bite on and not let go. We, wanna, we want the suspect that we're sending our dog off 
after mm -hmm. to have the least amount of in injuries as possible. Now, is that a natural thing for a dog to, or is it you have to really train them to hold on? Yeah, you're training them to hold on to how, it at the how, beginning. How did that happen? How long do you have? <laughs> It's a long, time. a long time. We use we use different training techniques, it. It, different different uh, theories for different dogs. A lot of it is genetics, mm -hmm. just based on what the dog will perform. Sometimes the you have to do very little uh, training with them because the dog will actually bite on and they won't let go. Oh, really? Other dogs want to want to travel around and move around. Because there's some that have like that lock jaw, right? Some some um, some breeds, right? I don't know about that. Okay. I've heard of that too. I, I think that's more of an urban you urban legend. Uh, with that, lo I think it's just bite pressure with certain uh, uh, dogs. I don't think that there's a specific function God, in like their jaw where they up. yeah. Okay. And well, debunt. Okay, debunt. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully. So um, yeah. So we train them to to bite on, yeah. um, and we. So we want the dog to be able to uh, apprehend a fleeing suspect mm -hmm. um, and to keep them at bay so the handler can obviously go up and arrest that person. Yeah. Um, everything is fair game for the bite, but we try and teach them that we want them to bite the right arm as opposed to anything else. And oh, that's why you're wearing a sleeve on, on your right arm, right okay. on the right side. And so usually I ask people who come in for demos why that is, do you, yeah. you want to take a kick at the cat? Why would why would we want them to bite bite the right arm? Most people are right handed. Because most people are right handed. Yeah. Got it. Perfect. I know. Okay. I, I'm looking at it. I'm trying to describe it for the viewers that are. Yeah, there. absolutely. So is this it, like a burlap type of situation? Yeah, it's like, burlap, and you can feel underneath it. It's yeah. a big piece of plastic. There's a handle. Yeah. Obviously, you, they can't bite your hand at the end of it, yeah. right? That's a that's a good day. It as right, and so so this is one of the uh, one of the training tech. Te uh, pieces of property we'll use, but we also have what, what we have our uh, bite suits over here. And so you can, you can, Winter green? yeah, it'll bring out the color in your eyes. Thank you. Oh, you put, oh wow. The surface. There you go. So it's pretty heavy, right? It's heavy. Yeah. But you can still feel, you, now you want a good suit. This is a fairly new suit. Yeah. You're not going to feel the tooth, that like the teeth go through the suit. Yeah. But you're going to feel the extreme bite pressure, yeah. the pressure of the of the of their jaws just clenching down, right? And so this is this is in order to teach them. Hey, if the right arm isn't available, you can take a a, a leg or another arm or what or, or what have you. And we have different sizes. This one I believe is from like should be in the Smithsonian, it's pretty old. Um, and you're still putting it on? <laughs> well, you never know when we're gonna do a clinic, of because course. so all the, all the handlers here have to be not only experts at handling, but they all ha also have to be expert decoys or quarries. Okay. So they have to be expert bad guys. Yep. And so I often say when I teach a course that I am the dog's second best friend, because this, as the quarry or the decoy, the dog is either finding me at the end of a track, mm -hmm. locating me, hide, hiding under a, you know, the other day I, for Ryan, I was hiding uh, under a, um, one of those electrical boxes that are in the ground. Okay, yeah. Places where makes sense. most something. officers wouldn't look to find them, but yeah. you need the dog's nose to be able to find them. And, and remind me, what is the role of this when the, the officers are so you're the, you're the second best friend, what's the name of the... Or the term when you're when you're in the uh, line, I guess, decoy, decoy, quarry, helper, anything. What do the officers learn from being the decoy? You know, what do they get out of it other than obviously trying to train their dog? But right, and so I will always tell, especially the new guy like Ryan over here, I will tell him, you're you're the person that's making everybody else's dog better. You're only as good as your decoys and quarries are because they're. That you can only do so much with your dog to develop him, but uh, there's there's lots of little fine details and uh, um, little uh, training techniques that you have to use to positively reinforce the dog when you're wearing the suit, yeah. and they almost have to be instinctual, where you can't you can't miss a mark. Like if the dog drives in and keeps in the same spot, yeah. you have to be able to mark that behavior and. If you have somebody that's not very good at it, it, mm. it, it defeats the, the purpose of the training, if, that, if, if you know what I mean. Okay. So you're all, I always say you're only as good as your decor or quarry. Which would make, which would make sense. I, I feel, are you, let's say I'm the owner of a dog. I can't be the decoy as well for my dog. Is it like a trust issue there? <laughs> no, I, I, it's, uh, yeah, it, it kind of defeats the purpose, <laughs> exactly. I, would, I, I would say. Yeah, but it's yeah. more like a, your training, I'll be your decoy, you know, for your dog. 
what yeah. I'm trying to do. Yeah, and so when the officers finish their basic course, they'll go out onto the road, yeah. and they'll have uh, other uh, officers that are assigned to their shift, and they will get to know their dogs intimately because they're going to be doing training with them all the time. My old partner used to say that his dog could find me uh, in the Eaton Center when it was uh, Christmas because <laughs> he, already knew he, he just knows me so well. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. Do you want to put the, the jacket on Can at the same the time? Yeah. yeah. So it's a weird dream come true. What we like to do is we like to we like to bring in uh, experts that are just solely that's all they do is decoy work in a suit and yeah. we'll put the handlers through and it's not for the dogs it's for the the handlers to be, become the best decoys that they can be I feel like that to be very physically fit too as decoys because it's a lot of tug and it's a lot of pulling it's yeah a lot of it's a very yeah. heavy suit what's yeah. the weight to this thing I, i'd say 35 40 pounds probably yeah. yeah and i mean there's not a lot of mobility yeah so. you don't you can't bend your arms the way you normally would you can't bend your your no, legs the yeah, normally you so would you only have so much do, yeah. No, that suit isn't broken in very well, yeah. but. Uh, you gave me the new brand spanner. Oh yeah, you always give the give the interviewer the I the best it. suit you can. I appreciate yeah. Appreciate it, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. So he's putting on the sleeve thing that I put on. By the way, okay, this thing is sturdy. It feels sturdy. <laughs> So I'm trying to encourage the behavior of the pushing yep. as opposed to the pulling. Yep. So you can imagine that the dog's teeth are shaped like this. Yeah. And if they pull, that's gonna really damage someone, right? And so we want to we want to put them to push in and to control the man. And when they push in, yep. they're not damaging all that skin and ligaments and stuff like that. Got it. So me as the bad guy, mm -hmm. I'm marking that behavior positively because they get excited when they hear that noise. Yeah. It's kind of like... It's higher pitch. Right. right like they're defeating me, right? Got and that's why when you you uh, you give a, 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 or buy a toy from the dog store, it's got that squeaking noise. Yeah. It's supposed to sound like a crap. Oh. So when they drive in and I feel yeah. them and drive in, I mark it. And that's positive reinforcement. Got it. And I only do that at the beginning. If they drive in, if they pull, pull, pull. Shepherds have more of a tendency to want to pull. So you just gotta sit there and wait it out. And as soon as they they um, push in, yeah. then you make it a big elaborate show of it. You might drop to one knee. Oh! Like you got yeah, me. Of course. So I'm basically, there's only one answer to that solution. One answer is you're gonna drive in, push in, yeah. and I'm gonna give you the appropriate response. I'm talking to John off camera and Mike, who's going to be here to show off the, the next routine. And they go, oh, wait, and meet Luke. Oh, who's Luke? They're like, you'll see. So we're going to meet Luke. So the first thing he's going to say, hey, you there, I know you're in the box. Let me hear your voice. Okay, and I'll yell or whatever you need. To do. Whatever you do. Yeah, I'm in this box. Yeah, you got me. I'm in here. Okay. Yeah. I want you to open up the door slowly and come on out. He's gonna have the, this is what it'll look like. Yeah. He'll have the Somewhere dog here back here yeah. and you're gonna come out of the box and that'll be the end of it. Got it. Okay, okay. don't pet Luke. I won't, oh God, this is Luke. All right, so this is our action cam for today. This is my phone. I'm gonna be, this is the suspect, um, I guess, weapon and, and it's the scent they know. So I've been asked to go into one of these boxes here. Uh, and hide out in this spot. Apparently there's a lot of earwigs, so we're gonna do head, open this up. Ah. No, it's no earwigs, we're fine. All right, okay. So this is my view from this side. Got it. Holding the handle tight. I'm in here.
be tough guy. I'm never gonna be that criminal that runs against the police, ever. John, thank you so much. Appreciate all the time and all the you know amazing things that you showed us with all these dogs. I think I've gotten a crazier new appreciation for not only uh, the canine unit as a whole, but the officers and you know the dogs that are working so hard. Uh, is there anything or last words you want to say to everybody that's listening and watching? That's a that's a tough question. Yeah, that's a real tough question. Um, no, other than you know, I I hope you really highlight the the amount of hard work and dedication that these handlers that work at our unit put in towards, uh, you know, training a, a good product that helps keep our city safe. Um, uh, the, the men and women that have worked here throughout the years, they've, they've done it because they've had a passion for working with animals and uh, well, what better way to spend your career than to working with man's best friend. Absolutely. So, is, there, is there any, um, I guess, places somebody can go if they wanted to, if they're ready in the force and want to try to get into the canine unit? Um, where they, where should they go? Well, they should reach out to our training section so they can reach out to Sergeant John Rose uh, or myself or my partner, which you saw earlier, Ian, mm -hmm. Ian Littler. They can email uh, Ian Littler or they can email my, myself. Uh, we're always looking for uh, people that are willing to put the time and the effort in to make a solid pro product and uh, to represent our unit. Amazing. Well, that was 24 Shades of Blue. We're out. <laughs>